Now it is D-Day for H.D. Kumaraswamy, the Chief Minister of Southern Indian State of Karnataka, who is set to face a floor test today. In an event that could finally end the political turmoil in the state, Kumaraswamy is expected to sail through the floor test with the support of Janatal Secular, the party and the Congress uh, lawmakers. However, cracks in the alliance have already began to emerge. The Deputy Chief Minister, G. Parameshwara, has uh, said that the coalition is yet to decide on the terms of the chief minister, but before the crucial trust would, the lawmakers would elect the speaker of the Karnataka Assembly. Unfazed by Edurappa losing the trust vote a few days back, the BJP has fielded Suresh Kumar for the post of the speaker. While the JDS Congress Alliance has nominated R. Ramesh, the trust vote comes after days of political twists and turns dominated by allegations of horse trading. And joining me live on the program is uh, our uh, senior correspondent, Nishtita Virendra. Nishtita, quite a crucial floor test today. Absolutely, without a doubt, uh, considering the fact that uh, the BJP refused to even undergo the floor test as they saw it coming. Now it is time for the Congress and GDS coalition to prove themselves. Uh, so H.T. Kumaraswamy, as of now, seems confident. But the BJP, on the other hand, has uh, decided to put up a fight when it comes to the speaker test. It has nominated Suresh Kumar, who is the former law minister of the state, for the position. And he will be facing off against Ramesh Kumar. Uh, the Congress and JDS have gone on to say that they're still hoping that the BJP will not make it into a contest as clearly the coalition has the numbers on its side. And once the speaker election is over, the BJP might even take a call as to whether they want to boycott this floor test. This comes in the backdrop of a series of protests that they have launched across the state. Uh, in Bengaluru also, we are seeing every day one protest being organized by the BJP against what they term as unholy, undemocratic alliance of the JDS and Congress who were arch rivals until the elections concluded. Uh, so today will be the day that JDS and Congress will prove that they have the numbers on the floor of the House. But as you rightly pointed out, Jessica, the problems don't end up that there seems to be a lot of uh, uh, a difference of opinion when it comes to who gets how many portfolios, cabinet portfolios, who gets which cabinet portfolios, and particularly whether H.T. Kumaraswamy will continue to enjoy the support of the Congress for all five years to become the Chief Minister. H.T. Devagada, who is the Supremo of the JDS, the former Prime Minister, has reiterated multiple times that uh, he is confident that Kumaraswamy will complete a full five-year term. And uh, this coalition is very different from the 2020 power-sharing coalition that uh, the JDS had with the BJP a few years back. But it seems like G. Parmeshwara's uh, latest statement has uh, thrown uh, a, a lot of uh, uncertainty around this coalition already. Doubts being raised on how many months or how many years it will really last. Nishita, it's a crucial test for this uh, JDS Congress coalition today. And the fact that there are already fissures uh, that can be visible and where, as you pointed out, G. Parameshwar Rao also talking about what kind of cabinet portfolios were you given there. While I was there in Bangalore, the turmoil didn't end when we thought there would be a stable coalition and when we thought the floor test would be won by the JDS Congress coalition. What are we expecting? Isn't the state tired of, this, uh, of these twists and turns and, uh, in fact, demanding stable uh, government in the state? That's right. Right. Uh, coalition governments have uh, seldom been stable, particularly in the state of Karnataka. Usually coalition governments have not really completed their full term. Uh, the last time Karnataka had a hung assembly, first you had the JDS extending support to the Congress. Uh, you had uh, 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 Dharam Singh becoming the chief minister. And then after a few months, JDS decided to change its mind, extend its support to the BJP. There was a 2020 power sharing agreement and uh, Kumaraswamy did not live up to that promise and uh, the government had to be dissolved again. Uh, after that, we had two full terms of uh, simple majority governments from the BJP as well as the Congress and now we're back to a coalition government. So it's extremely essential for not just Karnataka but also for the JDS and Congress here for sheer survival. Now the JDS, uh, this time around, they thought that... Uh, the, 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 uh, the, with the Wakkaligas coming together and with, uh, uh, with anti-incumbency against the Congress 
and uh, the BJP also not being able to shake off what they had done in their previous term, that they will probably emerge at least with 60 to 80 seats. But still, they have got lesser seats than what they did last time around with 38. For the Congress, uh, they thought that they were on the front foot, they were on the offensive, uh, they dictated the narrative of the entire election campaigning, uh, campaigning and eventually they ended up with it just 78 seats. And this was the biggest year that Congress was in power. So it is a matter of sheer survival for both these parties. JDS has been out of power for over a decade now. The Congress, as we know, has been relegated to a marginalized opposition across the country. Uh, so while on one hand doubts persist on how long this coalition will really last and you know you have voice of dissidents uh, which is not too obvious but you have G Parameshwara who's now the deputy CM going on to say that they're not sure if HD Kumaraswamy will be the chief minister for a full five-year term shows disagreement uh, secondly you have DK Shivakumar who is one of the strongest Vakaliga faces one of the strongest leaders that uh, Karnataka has today from the Congress, uh, who is clearly unhappy with the fact that he has not got any strong portfolio so far, whereas he's, he was the one who was uh, single-handedly responsible for keeping the MLAs together um, when there was this threat of horse trading going on with the BJP. So with many unhappy leaders because of this alliance, uh, there is a threat of it breaking off, there is a threat of many of the MLAs uh, uh, deflecting a few months down the line. And it is all up to the Congress and JDS how they manage this entire situation because at the end of the day, it is a matter of sheer survival for both these parties. Right, Nishita. And uh, this sort of unstable coalition uh, that we're seeing right now, where statements are being made that the term of HD Kumaraswamy uh, would be limited to certain years and not for a full term. With these open cracks that are visible, what is likely to happen? Will they even pass the crucial floor test today? Well, as of now, the floor test seems to be uh, something that the JDS and Congress are very confident about. But the fact that even uh, after the last floor test did not materialize, the Congress and JDS continue to hold their MLAs in hotels and resorts in the city of Bengaluru. That itself goes on to show that if they were allowed to go back home, uh, there was a threat of horse trading, there was a threat of many of them deflecting to the BJP. And they even went on to file complaints against uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party saying that they are using undemocratic means to lure their MLAs. And uh, the BJP continued to pursue uh, luring these MLAs is what they went on to allege. So yes, there was a threat and that insecurity was visible in these MLAs being hoarded in hotels where they had absolutely no access to the media too. So that is the reason probably why it indicates that it is not as smooth sailing as JDS and Congress would want us to believe. But now they have numbers on their side. Uh, they Even if a few leaders do not turn up uh, for whatever reason, then they still have numbers on their side because the strength of the house is down to 221. They have 116 MLAs on their side. And if they get 111, that is more than sufficient. But before that, it is the speaker election that is crucial. Uh, the BJP and Congress have nominated Ramesh Kumar. The, B, uh, so the Congress and JDS, I beg your pardon, have nominated Ramesh Kumar. And the BJP has gone on to nominate Suresh Kumar as uh, uh, their nominee. So if there seems to be uh, a tough fight that Suresh Kumar manages to give to big up for the speaker's post, then it once again goes on to reflect uh, the lack of stability in the minds of these MLAs as to who they are really supporting on the floor of the House and outside. Right, Nishita, we hope that it doesn't become another midnight hearing in the Supreme Court as to who will become the speaker now. But thank you for joining us with those details.